Welcome to another episode of Playing the Bounce, where today we're joined by former Lions, Sharks, and also utility back, Louis Lulis. Hey guys, Louis, thanks for joining us. Obviously, Benedict's here as well. He is our analyst, so we're so looking forward to chatting to you and Benedict's going to dive deeper into the technicalities of your career and the game. Louis, first of all, thank you for joining us. And um, um, I was retired last year, didn't you? Hi, Cooks. Now, thank you very much for having me. No, it's it's different. It's definitely different. Different to playing, I must say. It's um, I've, I was very fortunate to to play um for as long as I have, and the body just gave in in the end. But but yeah, no, it's it's not bad. Thank you. I'm enjoying it. Louis, how's it? I, I, I'm gonna dive into something quickly there. Cooks called you a utility back. Now <laughs> we all know that that that's never a good. It's a good thing, and it's a it's it's also it's like a blessing and a curse per se. Yeah. I mean, when you're utility back, your chances of being in the 23 or 22 are always high. But you you tend to want to be a player that specializes in a position. Like going through your career, I think you've played center, wing, fullback. Um, how how was it being a utility back? Did it help you? Did it negate your growth in certain positions? No, I think I think it can be a massive benefit. I think the fact that you can play multiple positions, especially in the modern game, is is vitally important. And I think a lot of guys, whenever they they start getting older, a lot of times they they maybe lose a yard or two. They go into the centre. So I don't. I think if you if you adapt your 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 game, and I think it can be very beneficial, and especially on in the thirteen channel. There's a lot more decisions to be made. Then it it helps your defence on the wing as well. So I think there's. There's certain things in certain positions that will definitely be able to, you'll be able to benefit out of it. And you can also understand those guys whenever they are in that position, you know what you would like from them and vice versa because you've been in that position just to just to help them out and then communicate with the guys inside or outside of you what you want out of them. So it can be a very beneficial thing. Um, I think that's why it's, for me, it's always been about being uh, being able to adapt, and especially playing under so many coaches. You have to continuously adapt your game and and do kind of try and do what the the coach expects of you. Sometimes it's not the it's not the best thing, but it is good to adapt to a certain coach and where he, they want you to play. And Louis, what's um, what's the easiest thing to do? Adjusting to different positions or adjusting from the beach and the sun in Durban to the to the cold in in, in Ireland. Uh, Definitely the position's much easier. Definitely. Now I miss the heat. It's um it's another it's it's quite cloudy today again, so it's it's the usual. But yeah, no, I miss Durban. Oh, I miss Durban a lot. The the weather and the beach and it's um and playing for the sharks was was a big dream of mine. So it's um I definitely miss those days, absolutely. I mean you spoke about different coaches I adapting. Guys. I mean you worked with some amazing coaches over the years. I mean, if if you were to look back on your career, I mean, I know um, at, at the Sharks, I think you worked with John Plumtree. I mean, which coach really stood out for you across your career and what made them special? Yeah, each, each of them, like especially now looking back, I was very fortunate and um, like for... Um, for for being able to play under under Plum was was amazing. Um, I think with Lofi giving me my first internet or first provincial cap, I was very I was very um, happy, obviously, and I'm very grateful towards Lofi giving me such a chance so early in my career. And being able to play under Plum, I think because we had such a good team, I think quite a few games I was the only non-Springbok in the team, so. For me, it was amazing to play play in that team, and it was we obviously won a couple of trophies, which was very special. Um, but I must say, the best coach I've played under was Bren, Brendan Finter. He came he came over from Saracens, and he was with us that one year when we won the Curry Cup in two thousand and thirteen, I think. So that one season, he was he was honestly incredible. The 
the the way that he approached the team, the players, his his player management is second to none. I've never seen anything like that. Louis, I mean, I mean, if it was up to me, you'd have been one of the one of the box as well. And the Sharks were a full box team. Um, but for you, I mean, you look at the the, the places you play, Joburg, Durban, obviously in Belfast. As for, for as a player, how hard is that to adjust to? I mean. You know, you know it's like playing in altitude, and the, I mean, obviously the, the 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 heat in Durban and now the cold in in Barbados. How did, how did you adjust from 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 move to move, and and how did your game change as you moved to the different teams? Yeah, the the fact that you train so many times during the week, you you, you get used to it, and you're customized to the to the climate. But I must say, in Durban, it was very tough with that humidity playing. doesn't matter how long you're there for. <laughs> it is so warm and it always just felt like you're in an oven and the heat is just coming at you. It was it was quite intense. But over here in Belfast, like, it is it is quite difficult, obviously, with the weather. And it's it's I was quite fortunate. It didn't rain too much whenever we played, but it's it's always cold whenever you run out. Especially that second half, you, your your body temperature cooled down, and you have to get back onto the field, and that was that was quite tough. But I think because you train so much um, in the outside, and you just you have to climatize. That's the the big thing. You just climatize, and your body adapts. I mean, you've retired now, um, and I'm sure you you've got moments where you look back on your career, you smile. Do you have moments where I mean, you, you went from being a young man to a father now? And you you spoke about being one of the non-springboks in a star-studded Sharks team. And when, when you look back, do you, I mean, you, you were good enough to play a bit of test rugby for someone. Do you ever look back and go, um, oh, that was the moment that I didn't quite crack it? Or do you have moments like that where you look back and you're like, maybe that was the moment that didn't give me that cap I've been looking for? Yeah, no, it's difficult, you know. It's. I look back, and one thing that I while I was playing, I always just knew I don't want to look back and regret anything. So I just always gave it my absolute everything. Sometimes I felt maybe I trained too hard, uh, tra- trained too much behind the scenes, and put my body under a lot of pressure. But that's what I felt I needed to play at my utmost best. And a lot of times I didn't feel like I was the as good as the players around me. So I had to train harder. I had to be fitter. And then, I mean, Louis, I mean, I think other players obviously remember, you know, the trophies they've won and um, all the big achievements. I mean, I, one thing I've always loved about you is the fact that every team that you've played for, you've sort of been a fan favourite. You remembered fondly. And how proud of you of that of that legacy that you leave behind, especially like within Ireland, the Africa, the Sharks, the Lions. I mean, like personally, you're one of my favourite players. I mean, you've always lived that legacy of being one of the fans' favorites, never lets the team down. How important is that legacy to you? Oh, no, thank you, Cooks. Um, yeah, I think after after playing and speaking to a lot of the, the fans, they just said it always just felt like I was giving it my all. And that's what I what I was all about on the field. I always just felt like I, I've been in such a fortunate position to be playing at that level. So every time I went out, I just gave it my absolutely everything. And especially us South Africans, we yeah. love contact. So, and then not a lot of the, the guys love that type of contact game, but I always enjoyed it. So I just always yeah. threw myself into the contact. That's maybe why I got so many injuries, but that's what I think that's what spectators and fans love. If they see you put your body on the line day, week in, week out, it's for them that's special because you know it's for a lot of supporters it's it's their whole life you know life is stressful they've got a lot of stuff going on but that's the 80 minutes 90 minutes that they can just relax and just you know just support a team that they love and just escape from maybe from reality for a bit I, i'm gonna put you on the spot a little bit here and say if you look back on your career what was your ultimate backline so these are players that you've played with from nine to fifteen, and you have to slot yourself in your favorite position. <laughs> what was the backline that you enjoyed? So I would put Ron Pina at nine. Ten, I would put sure. Um, I don't know if you know uh, uh, Freddie Michalak. Yeah, Freddie Michalak. Did you play in that game where you just dropped gold so many times in in the yeah. rain? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was against the Bulls, I think, in the semi final. Yeah. Or was it was it was it stormless away? 
we, we storm is away. Yeah, you're right. Our storm is away. It was just dro- dropping all over the place. Yeah, no, he was he was incredible. Then on the wings, um, I think JP JP Peterson and I'm sorry, Benedict, I won't be able to put myself in there, but um centers i would put um i'll go to get to the other wing now centers front front stain and jog three yeah then other wing probably in his heyday tommy bow that yeah. i played with here and then fullback very easy charles pieta and, and louis i mean you mentioned someone like charles pieta was absolutely ripping up the URC, before it was the URC. I mean, what is it like from you leaving Super Rugby and having to adjust to a whole new, was the Pro 14 at the time, to adjust to a whole new competition, a whole new, obviously the game, the game is slower. Like, how, how did you find that adjustment? And obviously, you know, what are some of the best players you played against when you obviously moved up to Europe? So it is obviously very different. And as you probably seen, whenever the URC started, I thought it was would be quite interesting to see how teams would evolve, and especially the South African teams. Whenever I played at the Sharks and the Lions, it's quite a few years ago now, but it was very unstructured uh, because there was so much talent in the team. It was a lot of X factor, so they they we wouldn't have like a three f- set phase. It would just be kind of a game plan, but it would be very much, especially our big fours around the corner, and then we'll just play whatever we see in front of us. So it's very different to over here. Personally, when I look at a game of rugby, I feel like obviously tight head is the most important position on a rugby field. But of course, of course. I think secondary <laughs> to that, I, I talk about 13. And you, you've played 13 before. Like, what can you go through what the visuals like from a defensive point of view and an attacking point of view, what it looks like playing as a number 13? Yeah, no problem. It's I think because there's so many lines in the midfield, and especially if you look at international yeah. rugby, and a lot of the times there's this this one move when nine plays to 12, 13 comes short and 10 out the back, and then there's options. So there's a lot of that move gets run quite yeah. a lot because there's there's a lot of variance and there's a lot of ways that you can you can play in a lot of options. And in that 13 channel, there's the, it's it, it's very difficult because the players move. For me, it was always, and I think I, I I picked this up with Brendan, or I can't remember exactly who it was. And always we used to defend in numbers. So for me, a thirteen is always. It depends if full, if the fullback joins the line. If the if the fullback joins the line on the edge, he's always third last. If the fullback doesn't get to um, last, then you are second last player. You need to defend. That's perfect. Louis, thank you for your time. Thanks for joining us. And we wish you all the best in retirement. Hopefully, you're not less adjusting now than you did in your career. But thanks again for your time. No, you're very welcome. Thanks for having me, Cooks. Appreciate it, Benedict. Thank you so much, guys. Have a lovely day. Just like in the game of rugby, you too can get better at playing the parts. How? We call it change science. And you can find out all about it here on the Change Exchange. <laughs>